I I don't know if there are any new entrants or new participants today, um, but nevertheless, um, let's let's start with where we left last time, and then I will probably um, the plan for today. I thought it is to just to we we were talking about um, we were talking about how internet connectivity works and all these things. Um, we also spoke about modem and um, Wi-Fi routers and things like that last time. Um, I'm actually going uh, a bit back today in terms of, you know, um, a bit of theory around how this network uh, works. I was trying to push it out because <clears throat> it can be a bit dry for most of you or probably all of you. Um, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Um, and we will try to make it as interactive as possible. Um, and in the process, maybe uh, we find it a bit in interesting as well. Um, <clears throat> so um, let me let me uh, quickly share my screen. Sharing. Um, share. Um, um, okay. Okay. Um, Okay, does anyone know about OSI layer? Um, um, it's a reference model. Um, uh, I want to talk through it um, just to give you a bit of fundamentals about networking, because this is all where um, the communication protocols and all these things that we discussed about last time. Um, this is the fundamentals or basis of um, on which uh, uh, you know the entire concept of networking has been developed. Um, um, so um, I, I would like to sort of start touching upon this and then move back to uh, the other other stuffs. Um, so how many of you um, have heard about OF OSI layer? Okay, has anyone, does anyone know what it is? Any answers or? OSI. We can talk, otherwise it'll be all, uh, you know, I'll be only talking and you'll be listening and maybe you guys will sleep during the is course and we don't want to do that. Is it operating system for internet? No, 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 no. So I, I'm not asking about the expansion of OSI. Have you heard about this in your, in any of your classes? Um, did you touch upon this in any of your curriculum? I it was it just a yes no, or no? Sir. Yes or no? Sorry, say it again. No, no, sir. It's a new topic. Okay. All right. Okay. No, sir. Okay. Um. So I'm going to um again go back to my drawing. All right, can you see my whiteboard? Yep. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Yes. yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So that's a computer, as usual. Um, that's the way I draw it. Um, need not look like a computer, but that is a computer. Okay, so uh, everyone knows what's a modem. I mean, we are talking about internet connection, okay? Um, a modem, okay, and there is a switch. So you've got switch ports connected to it. So the computer may be connected um, to the modem via a cable. Yeah, there's a cable connecting. So is the, what is the purpose of the cable? The cable is the medium through which, <clears throat> excuse me, through which these two um, devices communicate, yeah? And then from here goes 
your internet connectivity internet okay so um, let's say one of you is trying to access google.com um, so if you type google.com what happens so from the computer the uh, connection initiates and where does it go next name what is the next hop we discussed this last week where does it connect to so the modem well i i so when you when you type www.google.com through the modem uh, through the um, switch to the modem wi-fi router to the modem it goes to internet and hits what what does it hit to we discussed it last week anyone remembers there is a server which has got a listing of what google google.com is what is that called no one knows address yeah but what what is that server called the server is yes, d is the web server chat no no now before web server comes a, a component called dns, DNS. do you what what is a what is a function of dns domain name server correct what what does it do what does it maintain it maintains a record okay a record of uh, www.google.com points to 202.140. some some address yeah um so with that address it goes to which which site so once you have the address what happens what happens guys when you, once you get that address what does www.com translate to it translates a number and um, with that number what do you do the computer initiates a connection to the server google server right which which has got www.google.com address and it downloads a content this way right and we spoke about http https you guys remember this yes or no okay it, it it's good if you guys talk so that we can make it more um, you know interactive so that's that's the that's the, that's how what we discussed last week yeah now we go to um clear clear all my drawings okay can you guys hear me yes sir okay all right okay now <clears throat> pretend um so you have got a computer right a computer has got on a high level and this is really a high level right there's something called as an input there is an output okay there is something called as a processing which happens in the computer these are all basic stuff i'm not going to go deep into it right all of these functions happens within the computer now as a part of the output this output can go to the screen correct which is called a display this can go outside to another computer and which is why we use network is that clear clear guys yes sir. yes or no okay yes. okay so now how does that happen now our our topic of converse or our conversation is going to be around this particular section yeah now what happens when so all of those other things happen all of this happens in the computer out of this part now our focus of this session or the you know sessions we are going through the last couple of weeks and then couple of weeks more will be around networking now i'm going to focus more into that okay now i'm clearing all my drawings <clears throat> now um again computer have you seen in the computer cpu 
um, there is a port. There is a there is a place where you can connect your cable. Have you seen that? And this could go to a switch or a com uh, or a modem. Have you seen that? What yes. do you call that? What do you call that? HDMI cable. No, no, HDMI cable is not. Um, HDMI cable is another cable which is not connected to the modem. It will be connected to your display or a TV or a monitor um, or any other serial device or any, any other device. Now, sir, um, is it like that um, wear type or is it the pin one? It, it's a it's the it's not the pin one it's the uh, it's called it's it's of this shape more of a square yep and it's got a clip on top of it have you noticed that cable going yes. into a slot yeah so yes. that cable is called rj45 cable okay Okay, now I'll show you the picture of that cable so that it'll be easy for you. Um, where is that? I'm just checking where is the cable in my, in my diagram. I don't have it, I should have it. Uh, okay, um, I will cable, show you right? that picture. Jay? Yeah, yeah, that cable, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm connected, yeah, yeah, that's the cable, that's the cable. Do you see that cable? You see the clip here? I'm sorry, I'm just on the wrong button, yeah. So that's that's the RJ45 cable, yeah? So that RJ45 cable is the cable which we use for connecting the computer to any other device, okay? Yeah. Is that clear? Now, I will, I will go back to a Okay, now I'm just going to talk about that cable. The cable usually are in the form of, um, you know, different uh, individual cable within that. Okay. That's how they are formed. And they've got input, output. Input, output. So, that's quite a lot of cable bundled together. And then they, they go into that particular clip, which is called as the RJ45 jack, okay? It's got a clip on top of it. And that's the yellow cable, which Satish was talking about. That's the RJ45, okay? So what happens when you type whatever on this computer, like you know, uh, they are split into uh, individual, that's a eight bit. What's that called? Eight bit is called one byte, okay? So they are called, they are individual binary numbers. They get converted into individual binary numbers. And now all of that travels through this cable, right? And they are called digital signals. There's a plus, there's a minus, plus, minus. Plus is one and minus is zero. Plus is one, minus is zero, okay? So, or we could interpret it as an on state or an off state. On state or off state. That's how uh, all the computers work. Now, these data, these individual pulses goes through this computer and then reaches the modem. The modem has got a port or a cable, which is similar to the RJ45 cable. It's got a jack. So when the data comes in through the input, the output of, out, sorry, so the, the output, the in, input, and then there is an output, input, output, input. So let's pretend there is this layer cable which is coming in um, should I use a different color? Probably, yeah. Okay, so you've got input, output, input, output, input, output, input, output, input, output, 
input output. Now the output of this one, if this is sending the data and if this guy is receiving the data, is received by the uh, the the opposite cable from this side. So this kind of transaction happens through the cable. You don't have to too much worry about this. I'm just giving you a, a bit of theory behind it so that you know what is happening, right? So when the cable is connected to the computer, the computer sends the data outside through the cable and the cable is then connected to another device, be it a modem or whatever. And then you get um, you know, these pulses transferred from this device to the modem device. Yeah, and that is the cable medium that they use. Now, <clears throat> I am just going to make you, well, let's, let's you know, just, just keep whatever I said in mind for a sec. And I want one of you to explain to me um, a scenario where in which, um, you know, I pick who, who is okay to talk. I don't know, maybe um, Abiram, are you able to talk? I want to ask you something. Sir, actually it was uh, lagging sir, for me, so I couldn't hear properly. Oh, that's bad. All right, you didn't hear any of what I said? No, sir, I could hear it like it was breaking. I just went to uh, charge my router. Okay, I have not asked the question yet. I have not asked the question yet. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, now it's okay. Yeah, okay. So, Abiram, are you from India? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, do you have your relatives in India? Yes, I have. Um, can, who, who do you have in India? One of them. Can you pick one of them? Uh, my cousin sister. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So, Abiram, you want to write a letter to your cousin sister, okay? Yeah. Um, you want to probably invite her for your birthday party. Okay, this is a scenario which I am pretending and you're writing a letter. Can you explain to me, not a, not a mail, not an email, okay? You're writing a physical letter and you're posting it and the letter comes to your sister through some mechanism. Do you know how that works, how the entire system works? Let's, let's talk through it, okay? So you're writing a letter, right? Abiram is writing a letter. Now, what will you do after that? What is the next step that you would do? I'll try to send it. Okay, before you send it, what do you do? Uh, I would give the address. Okay, where do you put the address on? What is that called? You put it in a thing. What is the the format of the letter called yeah 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 no no so you wrote the letter you wrote the letter uh, dear so and so um, and you're writing it and then you're doing something else what do you do once you write the letter what do you do no, sir, i don't know you don't know you put it in an envelope right Oh, don't you put it in an envelope? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Then what do you do? You said that to me. Yeah, send it. What do you do? Tell me. You put that let letter in an envelope and then do what? Uh, we give it to the postman. Okay, before that, what do you do? You write the address, yeah? Yeah. Write the address. And that's the two address, yeah? Yes, sir. Correct? Now what you do, the next one? Hmm? Mm, next one. You, you, do you write your from address? Do you yeah. write your from address on the overleaf yes. of the letter? Yes, sir. From address on overleaf. Correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then you put it in a mailbox, correct? Put yes. it in mailbox correct now yes. what happens when you put it in a mailbox what is the next step that letter goes uh, where after one week it uh, gets to no, no. hang on hang on hang on don't rush after the mailbox let's go step by step 
because I want you to go through this. Um, and I, there is a reason why I'm saying all these things separately. Okay, so once you put that in a mailbox, what do you do? We wait for the letter to get the mailbox car gets carried over to there. So you you have got a mailbox next to your house. You put it in that box. Someone will come and pick it up from there. Yes. The mailbox gets trans. The mail gets transported to the post office. Yeah. Yes. Is that clear? Is that yes, how it sir. works? Then where are you currently? Uh, I'm currently in Kuwait. So in Kuwait, um, would, would, would I, I hope this is how it happens. So you go to the post office. Kuwait has a post office. And then what? After it reaches there, do you know what happens? And they seal it. Or... Yeah, they seal it. Very good. Stamp it. They stamp it. Stamp it with the from address. Yeah. From Doha. Is it Doha? Your state? Yeah. Uh, no, sir, it's Kuwait. Uh, Ku Kuwait, that's Qatar, right? Okay, sorry. Whatever is that city? Kuwait city, yeah? Kuwait city. So it would have a stamp with the Kuwait city on it, with a date attached to it, saying that 15th of May, we have received a letter from, from this guy. Now what happens? It's again, it again gets transported, yeah? Yeah. transported to the two address in india assuming you are in india which part of india are you in uh, i am in kerala okay so um, it goes directly to kerala uh, through multiple transport media it doesn't matter it goes from a f an airplane to a train to a bus to a rickshaw or whatever right now it goes to the post office near your suburb near your town Okay, so in there, what happens? They will start sorting it out. How do they sort it out? Sort it out based on the address, right? Correct? Based on yes. the address, they will sort it out and they will do a, what, what would they do? They would do another stamping. That stamping says that we have received it on 16th of May, for example. Okay, once it is stamped, it goes, the policeman, the, the postman carries it over um, and then it gets delivered to your sister. All right, let's let's pretend this is how it works, okay? There's additional steps, but this, let's pretend on a high level, this is how it works. So in the process, you are sending a mail from your house in Kuwait City. You are sending a mail, doing an envelope, putting an address on the top, and a from address in the rear or at the over back side. Then you put it in the mailbox. It goes to the post office. Postman stamps it, gets transported. Okay. And there is a receipt stamp written at this receipt um, post office with a date on it. And then it gets transported again and it gets delivered to your sister. Sister might respond to you in another letter. And it does follow the same step back to you. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is exactly what happens in your uh, network transform trans uh, tr transmission. Okay. I'll tell you what. You got a computer. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, too long. I understand that. And please bear with me uh, until we go through this in detail. Because this is the basis on which you would um, you would start understanding various protocols going forward. Okay. Unless you understand this. Uh, it's not easy to understand the other stuff. So that is why I'm spending a bit of time on this. Okay, so now you've got a computer and in the computer, you're sending an email. Okay, so you, you go to your Gmail ID or whatever, you send an email, assuming that that mail is the content of the body of the email, you hit the send button. It's got a cable. Okay, in the, uh, before you hit the send button, you've got a uh, two address, okay? To address. So pretend um, Abiram is sending it to her, uh, his cousin uh, who has got an email ID. So her cousin at gmail.com is the Gmail ID. Okay. So uh, he sends a two button. So this is similar to 
Abiram wrote a mail in the physical format, plus sent an address. And because you are sending it, your from, from address is automatically in there. Okay. So this entire thing, think about it as a packet. Now, we were talking about uh, a physical a scenario where in which someone sends a physical email, a physical mail, not an email, a physical mail from one city to another city. Uh, we spoke about what are the different steps involved in it at a high level. So someone writes a mail, puts it, puts, puts it in, into an envelope, uh, and then write a from address at the rear of the envelope, and then at the um, front of the envelope, you say to um, so and so in this city and all that, right? Um, and then it goes, it gets transported to the nearby post office, the post office personnel uh, stamps on it saying that we have received it, and then it gets uh, passed into the next um, communication channel through which it goes to the next city. And at the recipient's post office, they get a receipt stamp on it, they, uh, they put a stamp on it, and then again gets transported to that um, recipient. Okay, so the entire steps, the entire sequence of events, we were just trying to um, um, sort of, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, use that anal analogy to um, see how it works in the computer space uh, in, in terms of sending something from one person to another. So um, assuming that someone is writing an email and then hitting the to button, so, um, so the two is the destination, okay? That's the destination and the from is your source. So we always call uh, a network traffic um, uh, traveling from a source to destination, okay? Every time uh, a traffic happens, it is from a source to destination, fairly simple. Now, how does that happen? every network content or sorry every content which gets transported from one source to a destination we can sort of categorize them as individual packets of data so the the data which travels from a source to the destination are in network terms called packets okay i'll i'll talk to you about packets um, soon now in this packet, when it travels from, um, from a source to the destination, it travels through different layer, like it traveled through different hops when you sent a mail, a physical mail from your home to another home. So it traveled through various hops, right? Various spots. Now, in uh, networking concepts or OSI layer, they travel through multiple layers and that those layers are divided into seven category okay uh, i am going to present that in the slide pack what are those seven categories so the seven categories are i'm just putting in slideshow mode uh, where is the slideshow uh, slideshow mode from the current slide. Okay, so I'm just going to use the marker. Okay, just, so the just first. Just not go to the slides. It so hasn't? Wait for it. Okay. Uh, stop sharing. Why does Zoom work like this? I don't understand. Uh, share screen. You share the button. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, okay. So at a high level, we have got seven layers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physical layer. Okay. In, in, in the world of um, computers or networking, um, the physical, it, it starts actually from 
uh, it's ground up this way, okay? So a physical layer is usually considered as the layer zero, okay? A data link layer is called as the layer one. A network layer is called as the layer two. Transport layer is the layer three. Session layer is for the layer four. Presentation layer, sorry, did I miss something? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Layer five, and then the application layer. Okay, now, um, oh, in fact, sorry, I start with layer one, right? Layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. Okay, now, so remember you have got a computer. You've got a computer. A computer has got a network interface card on it. There is a port to which the cable is connected. That port is actually called as a network interface card, okay? Or in short, it is called as an NIC. Have you heard about this? No? no sir. Okay, so a network interface card is nothing but a physical component attached to a computer or any any device um, which can convey data or electric pulses from one device to another device okay so the network interface card is the physical layer of the osi layer architecture osi model okay make sense is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what happens? When the data goes out of the network interface card, it gets a from address. From address. Okay. So, pretend there is a packet. Okay. Let me clear this off. How do I clear it? Okay. Now, that is NIC. From the NIC, a packet originates, a packet. A packet is, is nothing but a data, okay? Whatever is the data. Assuming this is the email which goes up. Now it's got his from, from address. From address is usually the uh, did, did you remember I, I, we spoke about IP addresses yesterday? Do you remember that IP address? Not yesterday, in the last class, yes, we sir. spoke about IP address like www.google.com. And then we showed you an IP address of 148, 250, all of this. Okay, so that address is the address of the source computer. So assuming that the data is flowing from one computer to another computer. So this data packet will have source IP address, source A. That data packet will also have information about uh, the destination which it has to go to, which is the source B. So this is like, um you know um he was sending an email to his cousin the email is the data you got your source which is your from address you got your destination which is your to address now with that information it goes to the next layer okay which is the data link layer the data link layer adds additional information into it on top of the packet it says that okay this destination started with some address uh, of source A and source B. It also adds more information. I will talk about that information in the next, next slide pack. Now it goes to the, from the physical layer, it goes to the data link layer. From the data link layer, it goes to the network layer. From the network layer, it goes through. At each and every step, more information gets added into this, okay? So when it goes from packet, goes from physical layer to the data link layer, it gets 
um, you know, the source A and source B, and then it goes to the network layer, it gets additional information. And then that packet is called as a frame. Then it goes to um, a session layer, which has got session information, as in, you know, at what time of the day it started, how long was the uh, length of the packet, what all was there, those information is added to that particular packet. So it is like you go a stamp on top of, you know, at each post office, you get a stamp. So that stamp is nothing but what happens at each of these layers, okay? So with all this information, when it reaches the application layer with multiple information added on top of it, this is all um, not visible to you guys. All you send is some data, but when it goes through this layer of um, you know, devices or this layer, it gets added to the packet and then the destination it reaches there. Once it is reached, okay, think about the scenario, it goes the way down again, okay? What happens is that data gets stripped off. So it is like your cousin uh, unstrip, uh, you know, un, uh, what do you call that word? You know, you, you kind of open the envelope, start, you know, tearing the tip uh, apart and then go to the paper and then reads that. So the exact reverse of what happened in this layer, the exact reverse of it happens in the opposite direction and the data is received by the application layer. Is it, is it too difficult for you to understand? Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir, but it's a bit confusing. Is it a bit confusing? Okay, yeah. Okay, um, so I'm just trying to do this. Okay, now, um, okay. So at the physical layer, what happens is when the compute when the data packet leaves the physical layer, which is the com which is the computer. computer's um, you know physical device um, it's it's actually okay so look at look at it this way right so you you're writing an email okay an email is being written an email is an application okay an email is considered as an application that application has got some data in it okay data lay uh, when when the application when you hit the send button uh, so there is a packet that data uh, that data has okay that's the data and think that this is a packet like a envelope with the email okay now the data goes through a presentation layer okay it actually adds some information into that packet saying that this particular data is coming from Gmail. It's exactly not how this happens, but I'm just explaining this to you so that you guys understand this. So there is a data. Data says that how are you is the data. And that data is put in a packet. On the top of the packet, there is an information which is added to it, which says that this is coming from Gmail. G Gmail is the application name. Okay. Now, on top of that, then it passes through another layer, which, uh, which says that, okay, this particular data, data packet started at um, what time? Say 4.45 p.m. Sydney time. Okay, I'm just giving an example. Okay, then it goes through a transport layer. So there the packet gets added with another set of information. This is like someone stamping at the, uh, at the post office box, right? It goes from one post office to another. This is just for you to understand. So it, with that, it, it says, okay, now this, session, this packet, which start originated from Gmail uh, at 4.45 p.m. is destined to uh, Yahoo IP address, okay, 
um, and the Yahoo IP address is 202 whatever. It's just that packet gets that other additional information. Then another information says that, okay, now it came from Yahoo and this has to go to um, a server which has an IP address 202.140.55. Dot 20 just a random IP address it's just not a random IP address it'll it'll get the IP address of yahoo.com and then it just attaches to it that happens at the network layer now the next one the next one says that this data needs to be sent outside because it is not an internal email so it it actually um, says that this data needs to be sent outside so when it comes to the physical layer physical layer comes with a huge packet which has got the data inside it on top of it it has got multiple information added at every layer do you get that so you had your data then you have your time attached to it then you have your source uh, attached to it and destination attached to it then you have your ip address attached to it then it says that it has to be targeting to an outside world whatever that information is and then it goes to the physical layer and then it goes outside so when it goes outside it is a bigger packet so you sent a mail saying that it is how are you but when it goes outside what happens it's got multiple other data we are after passing through the different layers of network it got added with multiple other data and then it goes out so someone who receives it at the other end knows every single information about the data it knows where it came from what was the reason why it came from um, is, is it it is a mail service which is coming from uh, from you know your gmail id to another yahoo id every information is available in that data packet okay does it make sense who was the one who said uh, it was a bit confusing so it's me yes or no i get it. you get it yeah i mean if you don't get it i can i can explain it again no problem at all no sir i get it yeah okay so uh, OSI, uh, the seven layers of OSI is just a reference model. It is not exactly how it works, right? So don't ever think that, um, you know, every device which, um, which, which, which travels or transmits data from one device to another exactly adhere to OSI model. No, it doesn't. There are different models available, but the fundamentals of every model is the OSI model and it has got seven layers okay in certain models what happens is that some of these layers gets grouped there is something called as a tcp model tcp model then there is something called as a tcp ip model then there is a udp protocol which which actually uh, you know adheres to certain things so in 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 certain certain protocols follows this all of it certain protocol doesn't follow all of it and there are reasons why it is being done that way i will explain that uh, in the next couple of slides if we have time today we will we will um, go through it but in essence guys uh, you know what what i'm trying to say is um, osi model is giving a framework for all the future networking standards that are being developed across the world okay now and this is more fundamental and this is the most basic form of representation of data traffic um, which will give you a bit of a view as to what is happening at every layer or what is happening to a data packet when it traverses from one computer to another computer it could be two pc desktop pcs or it could be two iphones or two two phones or whatever right you know whatever it is you know the way the data tra traverses from one device to another device follows a particular pattern and that pattern is following the osi model okay now um, um so the as, as i said the layer one is the physical so now 
when it comes to when you go deep into this networking there are softwares or there are devices which work at different layers okay now pretend there is okay i'll i'll go back to the uh, are you able to see my whiteboard yes sir okay yes, sir. so that's a pc right and this is a server google assuming it is google okay now when it when the data traverses from uh, from a pc to a web server assuming that there are multiple pcs in the network so assuming that this is a network there are multiple devices there is a phone there is a tablet all of it all of it gets something called as a unique like all of us has got e, uh, a name attached to ourselves like you know sansatish j you know there is abiram there are different names for every every person um for each device to be unique in the environment each of those device get an ip address or a number attached to it that number is called as the ip address ip address okay uh, ip address is nothing but a uh, um a uh, four segmented four three two one four segmented number separated by a dot okay so um like a 202 this we saw it last time 140 30 18 so assuming that there is an ip address so each of those device carries an ip address in the network how do you see that if you want to see your own IP address, go to your command prompt, do a CMD, you get this dialog box, you do a IP config. IP, I, we, I explained this in the last sec session as well. So this one, this section where I see it, uh, or where, where it is highlighted, is called, um, a, do you see that? 192.168.1.102 that that section is called as the ip address that's the ip address of my computer here okay likewise every single computer will have an ip address attached to it and that depends on what network you are connecting to now uh, assuming that this particular uh, uh, particular computer has got an ip address of 120 198 162.0.1 now this guy sends an email out or sends some data outside now this guy sends a packet which is called a data packet and the data contains how are you okay what is the next step so that's the application from the application layer it goes to presentation layer right did you do you remember that from the application layer it goes to presentation layer what happens at the presentation layer at the presentation layer more information gets added here more information gets added here in the terms of you know what is my email client which i am using gmail.com right there are more informations like it used something called as a port number 80 and all that all of that thing 